what up? All right, uh, let me get over to the bow bow. So, uh, hello, uh, YouTube. Oh, you changed your PFP. <laughs> oh wait, no, never mind. This is the one from wait. No, that you did. You did. You changed it to yeah. your emo. Okay. I was about to say. I was like, damn, did your shit just randomly get way higher quality <laughs> from your PFP on Discord? <laughs> yeah. No, I uh, I've swapped my emote for my reactive. Ah, yes, I see that. Um. So how are how are you doing today, Danny? Doing good. Hanging out, having a uh, a good time so far. What have, what have, what have you done so far this week? Well, got a whole lot of like setting up and scheduling done. That's about it. True. I I feel that I feel that trying to figure out content and all kinds of crazy shit. Um, you got any things planned for this week? Or at least this weekend. Uh, this weekend, I only have, like, one more stream, and then I'm just gonna chill for the rest of the weekend, probably. Uh, when is that stream? Tomorrow. Cool! You wanna play, uh, D2 with me then on, uh, on Sunday? And we're gonna unlock, well, I mean, I need to unlock all the strand aspects, or the strand fragments. You probably already have all of them done. I, I literally just got all of them, like, <laughs> last night. <laughs> Did you see they're adding another one? Oh, they're adding a new one? Yes, they're the adding... being beaten? They're adding one... Uh, they're adding a new... As they're adding a new fragment. I think it's an aspect or a fragment. Specifically... For each class. Hmm. So there's gonna be one for Titan, one for Warlock, one for Hunter. I have to look at the... the it's on Twitter. You, you could probably find it on Twitter. Um, but they're adding something. I'm, I can't remember if he's either a fragment or an aspect. I know the Warlocks is called the Wanderer. So I'm going to assume that it probably gives me a lot more grappling hooks. Which is exactly what I want. So, uh, yeah. With that being said, uh, I think it's time that we just go ahead and dive in, yeah? Yeah, I actually haven't seen this one yet, so. Oh, well, shit. Okay, well, this may be an hour-long fucking episode then. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, welcome to the uh, the TWAB for the week. Um, so yeah, uh, so just they're just going over some stuff here at the very beginning. Oh, let me show my mouse. Uh, from last week, we're not gonna really cover that. Um, not gonna really get into it. Um, uh, this week, a lot of things that they're going over: world's first raid, the raid details, and rewards. There's a new quest and rewards co coming in Season of the Deep, which is next season, correct? Yep. Yeah, which will be next season. Uh, Iron Banner and Trials dates updated. Prime Gaming update. Uh, a new player guide. Known issues from player support. And, of course, art and movies uh, from the community. So, World's First Raid trailer again. Uh, Root of Nightmares, which is uh, the raid. Uh, we will not be going over that. Uh, but it is going to be based on Neo Muna. So, uh, this was released uh, today, actually. Or, well, technically. Um, oh my god, actually, it's technically going on right now, I think. It uh, World's First has already been done. Oh, it's finished? That was four hours ago, it was confirmed. Who won? The team that won. Team Hard in the Paint. Oh, th that's a new team, right? Yep. It's the new world's first team. Nice. Well, congratulations for those of you that are that that watched the world's first. Um that's pretty interesting. Where did uh where did where did Mathematics and uh um Elysium end up? I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I probably have to like look. Yeah, because I know those two teams cuz one cuz it's Mathematics, right? Or is it Math? It's math. Math is Datto's team, and the other team, Team Elysium, uh, is uh, Salta Greppo and um, oh, who else is in that uh, group? I'm trying to remember. Yeah, but it's Salta Greppo's group, and it's specifically a lot of people were watching this raid. Um, I'm, I'm assuming because it was done in four hours, I'm going to assume that he would either a it was 
extremely bugged and people got to skip a bunch of shit or it went so flawlessly and people were just so good that they immediately got through it uh which one was it danny i didn't hear any issues of servers or anything Let's so fucking go i think the teams just finally got to go in with what they had which is in my opinion pretty decent so, and I think a lot of people were, and I do want to just talk about this just a little bit, is I know a lot of people were, were, and I know that I was saying that this will be, this raid will determine whether or not, if this raid, as long as it's not bugged, this will determine whether or not Team Elysium is the best world's first team. Um, Because they be, they came first in... Deepstone, uh, well, no, not Deepstone. Was it Deepstone Crypt? No. I can't remember. It was, no, um, it was, it was Vogue, Kingsfall. Vogue and Kingsfall were the two reprise raids where they came in first. And then they did Vow of Disciple. Vow of the Disciple. But that raid was so, that world's first was so garbagely bugged. That, it was just glitchy. Yeah, it was really bad. Um, so... So it was kind of like people were looking to see whether or not like they would get this with no bugs, no issues, no problems, right? Um, but I mean, first of all, what was the team that won again? What's their name? Bird in the Paint. <laughs> what a great name! It's pretty good. <laughs> so, well, I guess congratulations, Hard in the Paint, uh, for winning Worlds first on a uh, Root of Nightmares. Um, I really wish I got to see it. Unfortunately, your boy was at work, so I did not get a chance to really watch. Um, but that is super dope, uh, to everybody that got to participate. Uh, there's also some Twitch drops here. Uh, there was a Twitch drop for the world's first race. And then, uh, during the first 48 hours, you can check the Twitch drops guide for full instructions on getting your Twitch account linked up. Uh, so it's dim italics, particle acceleration. Uh, and they basically just went over the, all the contest mode, which we're not going to really go over since the raid, the, you know, thing already happened. So, whoopsies. <laughs> um, not really too pressed, but it's from what it looks like, it's pretty much standard raid ship. Twenty power below the encounter. Uh, first team to fully complete it, need confirmation, shit like that. Blah 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 blah. You know all the regular. Um, so yeah. Uh, that is actually a pretty dope looking belt, though. I'm not even gonna stunt. That's a really good oh, yeah. looking belt. I, I the world's first belt is always pretty solid i was gonna say and people say that it's actually really well made too like it's not some like oh, cheap, yeah. like piece of cardboard i i think they actually get the uh the manufacturer that does the belts for wwe to make these i wouldn't be surprised i mean they're nice they're really nice looking <sighs> like they're insanely nice looking um so that's pretty dope uh, another thing to note is that players who complete the raid before March 21st will have access to purchase the exclusive Root of Nightmares raid jacket. Um, so if you do want to do the raid not during Worlds First, uh, and you want to get some merch, uh, you as long as you complete the raid before the 21st, it will be set on your account, and then you can go and buy the jacket. Which, I'm not gonna lie, that jacket's- holy shit, there's a design on the inside?! I, I can tell you right now, because I have the one from Deepstone. They're really fucking nice jackets. Yeah, that like, is... They are fresh. Ooh, that's some... Yo, Danny, we may... We may need to go into Root of Nightmares. Let's... <laughs> All I'm saying is that you and I need to do a little bit of research, and uh, I think uh, in a week or so, I think we go balls deep. We go, as they're, you, as you would say, jackets. I think we should go... Hard in the paint. <laughs> I'm sorry to all of you watching on YouTube. <laughs> I'm, I'm seeing some things down the list that make me very excited. Yes, along with that, new revelations and rewards to come. As we mentioned last week's top, Twab, uh, Twabby Wabby, a new year of storytelling kicked off with Lightfall and will continue through our seasons between now and the final shape. Also, fuck the witness. Um, while we're just a week into Season of Defiance, and we don't always share future narrative details this far in advance, we feel it's important to give uh, everyone a preview of a particular quest we're bringing to Neomuna in Season of the Deep, as well as the rewards it provides. Here we go! This is what we're talking about! This is what I mentioned earlier, Danny. 
Throughout this quest, players will explore the city to learn about the nature of the Veil through Osiris' research and newly uncovered Ishtar Collective data. This brief pursuit will be available to all Lightfall owners and will take place separately from the events of Season of the Deep. So it'll be kind of like a second storyline, kind of. Um, as a reward for completing the final step, players will gain access to three new strand ax uh, aspects, one per class, to add even more depth and creativity to their builds, and we're excited to reveal their names today. Uh, Titans will get the aspect of Flechette Storm, Hunters will get the aspect of Threaded Spectre, and Warlocks will get the aspect of the Wanderer. Speculate away, we'll have more to share on these as we get closer to Season of the Deep, which will be about three months from now. Note that these new aspects are planned to be earned by completing this upcoming quest, rather than requiring additional Strand Meditations to unlock. Uh, the quest will also remain available in the Amona uh, in, perpetu in perpetuity uh, for all Life Vault owners, so you won't miss out on the chance to pick it up after Year 6 comes to a close. That is very important to note. That means that Neomona will be staying for quite some time, and at least will be guaranteed throughout the rest of the year. That is very important to note. As an additional reward, Lightfall owners will also get their hands on a new legendary weapon upon completing this quest. Here's a close-up look at some concept art for now. And that is... Oh, that's a... That is wild. That is a... It, so, do you want to know what this looks like to me? Um, it looks like they took, <laughs> this is going to sound so fucked up. It looks like they took Hawkmoon, put a bump stock on it, uh, and then gave it an extended barrel. It kind of does. <laughs> they get, they basically took a 44 Magnum, gave it a fucking bump mag, and gave it an extended barrel. What the fuck? <laughs> that will... thing is probably going to be crazy, too. Uh, if this thing doesn't have rangefinder on it, I'm going to be severely sad. Like, this is screaming rangefinder at me. Um, I'm very interested. I also love the, the veil plant design on it. Um, I think that this is beautiful. I think it's amazing. Um... This is phenomenal. Like, this is good. Yeah. This is good stuff. Uh, along with that, they're doing an Iron Banner date change. Uh, this is the spot we are going to do a big write-up about Iron Banner next week and get you all excited for the first one this year. That write-up is still coming in a future twa, but for now we have an update this year that we think will result in a better experience for everyone. You know that annoying bug we have had since the launch of Lightfall where after playing enough Crucible, or literally anything with a commendation screen, all the other Guardians and sometimes you disappear. Well, the fix is scheduled to go live on March 16th, but that'll be just less than a week from now if you're watching this uh, the day this uh, video comes out, two days after the start of Iron Banner. And we don't want to have our premier Iron Banner start off with two days of Invisible Guardians uh, or everyone playing Iron Banner restarting day two every hour. So we're making the tough decision to delay Iron Banner a week. That means a couple of things. One, good news for Trials fans. We'll be moving Trials of Osiris up to next weekend instead, since the issue should be fixed before Friday morning. Uh, there will also only be a one-week uh, break between the first two for the between the first Iron Banner week ends on 3:28 and the second Iron Banner week, which starts on 4:4. So to recap, Trials of Osiris will now start on March 17th, which was previously March 24th, and Iron Banner will now start on March 21st instead of being March 14th. So I think that's, uh, in my opinion, I think that's fine. I think most PvP players uh, will agree that they would rather not have people just getting domed because they're invisible. And... Yeah, and I had seen, like, a lot of people already complaining why Trials was so late into the season, and that's fair, honestly. Yeah, and, and, and in my opinion, I think that this is perfectly fine, especially from a casual standpoint, because no matter what, whether you're a pro PvP player uh, or you're a casual scrub like we are, um, you like to see when you're getting shot at by someone. Yeah, no, it, I I can confirm from playing a little bit, doing bounties and stuff for the weekly. It's kind of annoying when everyone's invisible. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'm honestly, I, I think this is a good change. And I think that, that Bungie, the Bungie gameplay team is fine with this. I think that's totally okay. 
because it makes both the pro and the casual player base both happy. Because it means that the casual player base is not going to have to deal with bugs while they're just getting, like, their basic missions done. And pro players can go be sweaty without having to bitch about shit that prevents them from being sweaty. So, it's a win-win on both sides, and I'm not mad about it. Also, you can actually focus trial stuff now, so I'm kind of ready for that to come back as fast as possible. Yeah. Uh, the Prime Gaming update uh, is here, and there's a bunch of new stuff. There's the Popcorn Eating Emote, the Bare Bones SL19 Sparrow, the Andromeda Gleaming Ship, which, by the way, is baller as fuck. Um, yeah. I believe that is an exotic. Yeah, that's an exotic. Uh, you get a Defiant Projection, and you get the Falling Stars Emblem, which is not seen. Um, but I think it's super dope. I think that's fine. Uh, pretty good stuff. Again, if you've got Twitch Prime uh, and you don't have, and you're not collecting this gear, you really should. They give out so much free shit. They basically give out two to three exotics of any kind basically a month. You're getting free shit every month. 100% do it. Abuse the fact that you have Twitch Prime. Also, just fun fact, you can also subscribe to Catbox Danny and Domini Fox on Twitch uh, with your Twitch Prime sub. Uh, just as a friendly <laughs> fucking reminder. Uh, doesn't cost you anything, uh, and it helps both of us uh, when we're not making YouTube videos. So, yeah. Uh, along with that, new player guide. I'm actually very interested in this. Uh, speaking of being uh, new around here, last week we released an informational guide to help our new and returning players out. Whether you are a returning player, a brand new player, or even one of our veterans, there's a ton of information, a lot of really cool inside of the game, and it's one of those things that you can reference over and over again whenever you just can't remember who that NPC is or where to go on Bungie.net to find a cross-save guide for your friend. Okay, okay, we could go all day about this, but we'll kind of defeat the purpose. You can read it for yourself here, and you can click the, 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 the here button. Um, so I think that's great. Uh, and, and... I need to take a look through that myself because so, someone that I, uh, a few of my friends that I've been helping get into Destiny have thanked me for basically telling them you can ignore everything Shahan says because he is not relevant whatsoever. Oh my god, that dude is so fucking useless. It's like you finish the tutorial, good. You don't have to talk to him ever again. He's, Unless you want bounties. Shahan's absolutely fucking useless. He exists for the tutorial, and that's it. And the well, tutorial is well, not and the great. New, and the New Light campaign. And the New Light campaign is... That is the tutorial. Yeah, and it's... Uh, it's not <laughs> great. It's not great. No, ever since they updated it, it's um, it's not good. It's not good. It's pretty out of date. Yeah. Um, so it's nice to see them doing a new guide, and I do want to touch on this a little bit. Uh, a lot of times when games do a lot, go through a lot of updates, uh, they don't update their their new player guides or their tutorials. Uh, and Danny and I can both attest to this to several of the games that we play. Um, uh, a key one being World of Tanks, or you know the recurring franchises such as like uh, Call of Duty or Battlefield. They really don't give you updates on how shit works. They just expect you to know how it works, and it does take a little bit of time to reacclimate to things. So having the new, having a new updated guide really does help. Um, and I'm glad that Bungie, the Bungie team, really kind of actually took the time to do that. Because uh, it shows that they know that a lot of players came back for Lightfall. Because Neomuna's lit. <laughs> so, uh, Neomuna is lit. Just, just as a perspective thing, today, and it is an outstanding day because well, it's first race and everything. Destiny Two was second on Twitch. What? In total viewers. What was number one? Just chatting. Yeah. No, nah, go figure. But hey, that's fucking lit. We actually D D2 passed up League of Legends. That's pretty that's, fucking impressive. That was over five hundred thousand live viewers. That's a lot of people for Twitch streams. That's pretty insane. I'm super hyped about that. So, uh, player support. We're gonna go over this, and this is something that we def that we wanted to go over. Um. Grant, so they disabled a lot of shit for raids first, or for yes. worlds first. Uh, they uh, disabled Grand Overture machine gun, the Fighting Lion grenade launcher, the Winter's Bite, 
uh, exotic glaive, the Jotun uh, fusion rifle, and hierarchy of needs exotic bow. For armor and mods, they uh, got rid of Sighton's Ramparts Titan Exotic Gauntlets, Threat of Ascent Strand Fragment, it'll also be disabled across the entirety of the game, uh, and the Empowered Finish Armor Mod. Um, so I can understand some of these mods and how their, yeah. their interactions would be weird. I'm curious about the weapons, though. I know for three of them. Oh, actually four of them. I don't know what Hierarchy did. Yeah, a lot of people on Twitter were like, why is Hierarchy getting disabled? But yeah, if you wouldn't like, mind going over the other four for me, Danny, because I wanted so, to see how bad they are. Grand Overture. The uh, the missiles kind of bug out the damage numbers in the game. Uh, like so that's, the, that's the, understandable. The, like the numbers were too high or the numbers were too low? It would do that thing where it just glitches out the health bar, so it could take a massive chunk out of it or not. <laughs> kind of random. And it was tied to frame rate. Gotcha. Okay. Fighting Lion. Fighting Lion is doing a fuck ton of damage from mm -hmm. direct impacts this season. Because, <laughs> you know, they added mods that give uh, void weapons more damage when you pick up, when you have, like, armor charges. And you and get they, three and, of those. And volatile rounds. Yep. And volatile. And on the last bar of the artifact, there's a thing that gives you more void weapon damage for getting a kill with a void weapon. All of those stack. <laughs> so, so just for uh, just for reference on Neo Muna, uh, there are some enemies that I was hitting for 120k with Fighting Lion. Yeah, that sounds lit as fuck. It's a it's a little little strong. It's a little strong. Yeah. Now what? And the Winter Bite Exotic Glaive. It uh, it was doing nine hundred thousand damage without using ammo on Titan <laughs> because Syntheseps. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, that'll do it. That'll fucking do it. <laughs> Anything a Titan could melee, uh, yeah, it was getting demolished. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. So uh, uh, then... it's still available on everything that's not a raid right now. So if you do ha get your hands on it and have a Titan with synth subs, uh, have fun. You're going to kill every boss that you encounter. All right. Now, I am curious. What the fuck did happen to Jotun? If you picked up one brick, it gave it full ammo. Oh, right. I think you, we discussed yeah. this last week. Yeah. Yeah. That's a little busted. Also, they're still trying to Jotun. figure that out. Fuck Jotun. Just fuck off Jotun. Hate that the thing, so much. The thing that I'm more interested in is why did Sightons get disabled? That's genuinely funny to me because they nerfed the uh, barricades. I'm wondering if there was a weird bug that if you shot through the barricade, uh, it increased damage unintentionally. Maybe. I'm, I'm thinking that's the only th It's either that or it just wouldn't let you shoot through the barricade. So it's like I'm... something weird has to be going on with it. Yeah, I'm wondering if it's... It, it's got to be something to do with the actual shooting through the barricade. I think that's probably what happened, just because that's a very specific coding. Like, that is a very, very specific coding. It's still just so weird that out of all of the things, that is what's disabled. Yeah. The uh, That aspect, I know why. Because currently, what you could do is if you use the grapple hook and made a spot for the tether, and then just used your second charge on that, it would not consume the second charge. So you could just sit there as long as that point was there, and keep refreshing it, and keep reloading your weapons. <laughs> so that, that was a slow, it's a little strong. <laughs> that sounds amazing. Oh my god. That sounds lit as fuck. It's a little dumb. I did use it for some public events. It is kind of dumb. I bet. Um, uh, and let's go talk about the, the character boost versus campaign boost. And Danny, I'm going to let you go over this one if you wouldn't mind. All right. This is a fun one since they just introduced this. So let's see. The character boost appears when you hit soft cap 1750 without artifact power with one character but have not completed lightfall. Boost provides selected character with a set of high power level gear. Boost does not skip the campaign. So basically, the character boost is if you want higher level gear 
to do the campaign. And the campaign skip just skips the campaign and unlocks Strand. And just gives you... Let's see. It only gives you the gear if your main character hit the soft gap. Yeah, so if anybody came into my stream the other day, um, my gu my guardian was at 1750 uh, without artifact level. Um, yeah. And so when I completed the campaign talking to uh, Nimbus, I think it was, uh, for the last time or something like that, uh, they gave yeah. you a set of like 1770 gear to basically yeah. give you a 20 point level up. When when you complete the campaign on Legendary, it gives you a full set of 1770 gear. Yeah, because because the hard well the 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 and I'm gonna put this is the the soft hard cap was is what 1800. The uh like actual, the actual hard cap. This season's eighteen hundred. The pinnacle's eighteen ten. Yeah. So yeah, the there there is there is that. Uh, then there's Destiny Two Ritual Reset Daylight Savings Times. Um, there's a lot of known issues. Uh, are what the? F Why are there so many known issues? This is this is this is actually small for a uh, an expansion drop. Hold on, let me see if we can find Satan's Ramparts, why they've got, uh, disabled. Um, they are not... Okay, they don't message... They don't... I don't see it in here. Okay, yeah, I'm not seeing it here. Um... There's some weird ones. Yeah, I'm not gonna really go over these, just because a lot of them are just flat-out bugs oh here we go weapons can mark targets through titan barricades what oh right that's the pistol yeah <laughs> yeah the one that i'm looking right now that i can see as being a major problem is the radiant status effect does not buff strand weapons yeah. that's kind of that's kind of a yikes yeah yeah, so, um, but, I mean, there's, Reservoir Burst Explosion with Subsistence can sometimes fail to activate on kill. Oh, that sounds awful. Oof. So, yeah, we're not gonna really go into a bunch of this stuff, um, but, yeah. We're, uh, just, just note... Give it, like, another two weeks, and most of these bugs will most, for the most part, probably be taken yeah, care of. Yeah, like, by the end of the month, it'll be pretty stable. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and now we're gonna get into the community, uh, tab. A snowman and Anna Transmat into the tower. Wait a second. Oh, it's I Frostbolt! And he is looking <laughs> quite dapper. Uh, I'm not gonna watch the video, but I'm gonna I assume see. that it's I Frostbolt probably getting punked by something i see he's the, playing uh, gambit i see the quicksilver i'm terrified to click on it and i'm not going to but uh, i will watch it later Along i am gonna click on it <laughs> please do uh and then there's casey rue as promised here's a time lapse more than a time lap uh a time lapse more than a time lapse i suppose of my recent work anna's despair I am so ready for light bulb, and it is a casket uh, with Anna and the fallen red uh, in the casket, and that's oh. that's beautiful. It is also can confirm that Frostbolt clip was sick. I will have to go back and watch it, uh, and then along with that, the solo headlong time trial, uh, fifty three seconds by Henra can fly. Um, Hinra being, uh, the fucking goat that they are doing the dumbest fucking challenges. <laughs> that I've... is an impressive time. Yeah. I've heard also that this headlong mission is super fucking fun. Once, like, doing it when it's not on Legendary, it is in fact fun. Yeah, I've... On Legendary, that's hell. Yeah, I have heard that it is fun, though. So, that is interesting. Uh, and then there is Strand Fried Rice. What? 
Uh, and then V23, a uh, lunchtime comic. I couldn't be bothered to draw proper hands uh, for my first thought from the Strand trailer on seeing that scene was Cat's Cradle. Uh, and it's really hard for me to pull all of it up because they cut it off. Uh, but it's Osiris saying, there, you almost have it. And it's just the Guardian doing Cat's Cradle with Strand. <laughs> I, funny. That's good. That's good. I love that. Uh, Screeby, I believe in Thembo rights. You're not going to believe this, Light Bear. A shrimp fried this rice. <laughs> Great. And honestly, you know what the sad part is? Nimbus is so fucking dumb. I could actually see him saying this in this in, in the fucking game. I I have grown to appreciate Nimbus a lot more doing the uh the extra missions. Yeah, I mean, during the regular missions, Nimbus is kind of bitch-made, but uh, I think after the campaign, when you get to talk with him and actually, like, chat with him a little bit more, he actually becomes a little bit more lovable uh, as a character. He's... I would actually... And, and Danny, you can argue with me on this a little bit. Um, cause, uh, we'll, we'll debate this for a second, uh, since we'll, we're going to finish this in less than an hour, so we can blow a little bit of time. Um, I feel like Nimbus is kind of in the same boat that crow is and what i mean by that is that players originally did not fucking like either of them but through the story and eventually more through the lore especially for next season um i feel like that nimbus is going to get a lot more love much like crow did and how a lot of players and guardians just as a whole tend to really really kind of bonded with crow a lot um, because it's, Crow is, Crow is a weird character where, you know, obviously the fucker was evil, but like, as Aldrin saw, he knows what he did and he feels bad about it, right? Nimbus is kind of in that weird boat of like, people don't like him because he's annoying as shit. Because he's like a fucking 10 year old kid that got given like a six pack of monsters and was told to chug all of them. Um, <laughs> is th honestly the best way that I can describe Nimbus. Um, I mean, what, what are your thoughts about it, Danny? Do you agree or disagree that they're kind of in that same boat of like how their characters are kind of progressing? At least as of the current moment. Like, the thing is, like, I feel like Nimbus has more potential. <laughs> Really? You like, don't you don't Crow... you think Nimbus has less potential than Crow has? No, I think Nimbus has more potential than Crow. Crow, I feel like they got to a point and they just they can't really do anything else from where they're at. Without obviously making more story. Yeah. Which I think and is And the past few times they brought Crow up has just been I don't know. I feel like Crow is just off. I mean, like they had potential there, and I feel like they just waited too long to do anything with it. Yeah, I, I mean, I think Crow's, I think Crow's major peak was the season of season of the was it the Chosen when Keitel first came in. Yeah, I think that was really Crow's peak. Because, uh, spoiler alert, the shit happened last year. You should have fucking played the game by now. Um, Crow took a bullet for Savala, uh, and he lost his mask because of it. And Savala realized that Crow was originally Aldrin Sov. Um, yeah. but I think that that season of The Chosen was a great storyline for Crow because he also realized that he fucked up the season afterwards. Um,. With yeah, with Saladin, um, with Saladin getting sent to Keitel. It's like that season where he like he took the bullet for Zavala. That was that was great character development there, and then he went right back to fucking up. Yeah. So, but and I definitely I definitely think that the season I think the those three seasons were I think pivotal to how Crow is, and then I do want to make this very very apparent is Season of the Haunted. Season of the Haunted, when they brought back the Leviathan, 
with the dog shit awful public event that was the, the fucking mission, basically, and the nightmares. I think that that was a really redeeming quality. I think that was probably one of my favorite storylines out of that between between Crow, Savala, uh, and Keitel. I think Crow was honestly my favorite out of all of those um, because uh, he finally realized that uh, he can't deny that he was Aldrin Sav. Like, he just have to accept pain. Like, that's yeah. all he can do. He just has to accept that that's who he was. And that he just has to move on from that. And I think we've seen bits and pieces. He just hasn't really been played, like, really in the fourth round in a couple of seasons. Um, which is why his character development has kind of been stunted a little bit. Um, but I, I think... I don't, I don't agree that Nimbus has more potential... Simply as the fact of that, number one, um, he's he's a Cloud Strider. So, uh, number two, uh, the Traveler can't bring people back to life anymore. So, yeah. he can't become a Guardian. So, either Bungie nukes his ass, uh, or he has to live on, like, <clears throat> 2 HP <laughs> in order <laughs> to stay in the storyline. Because uh, Nimbus is strong, but he's not... Guardian Warlord level strong. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, the Cloud Striders are on like a completely different level. Yeah. Guardian, the, the Cloud Striders, the best way that I can describe them would... They're honestly, in my opinion, I think they're level with the Cabal. Like, they are... Number one, they're physically... They're physically strong. The um, thing that's terrifying is that they're like a foot taller than the Cabal. <laughs> Yeah, but they're also they're huge. Yeah, they're a foot taller than the Cabal. However, uh, they're not nearly as beefy as the Cabal. But they're both relatively, for the most part, the same strength wise. Yeah. Um, it's just the Cabal have more of like a wider, uh, uh a wider stance in a way. So yeah. it'll be really interesting to see how they interact. Um. And I really want to know more about the people of Neo Muna and the Cloud Striders, because uh, they didn't animate like ninety nine percent of people in Neo Muna. They just don't they... exist. They're just fucking light forms. There's a lot of stuff that actually explains that. And we'll probably get to that if you come to my stream on Sunday. Selfless yeah, it's promotion. It's really. Neomuna is really interesting. A lot more interesting than I think a lot of people originally gave it credit for. Because a lot of people said that Lightfall was not as strong as Witch Queen. And I'm going to be honest, the campaign seemed a lot shorter. It was a lot shorter, but I understand why. This is basically the expansion of quality of life changes. Which There's I... a lot. Yeah, I mean, I, and I think that's 100% fair. Um... Which I mean, because they're getting a lot of the quality of life changes done now in this season, um, so that the next three seasons before the next DLC, uh, which is confirmed, that is uh, Final Shape, right? Yeah. Yeah. They're doing it now, so that way the the rest of the seasons can go incredibly smoothly, which I'm fine with. I think that's okay. Uh, it just sucks that I really wish the campaign was a little bit better, but it really is what it is. Uh, the other thing is, I think they're changing the way that they're doing the story. Instead of doing it all in the expansion drop, they're just going to do it throughout the year. Yeah, which I don't, I don't know if I like or not, if I'm being honest. As long as it's not time-gated when it comes here, yes. I won't have a problem with it. Yes. If it's time gated, I will have a problem with it. A hundred percent. I absolutely fucking agree. I think that if it is time gated, that is a massive L. That is a massive L. Like, this is pretty integral to the story, Bungie. Like, Neo Moon is pretty integral. Also, gonna say it again. Please do not do the repeat of what you did for Season of the Seraph. Do not put the end of season mission locked on legend difficulty don't do that oh my god that was such a don't pain make it a pain to finish the story 
that was actually a giant pain on the dick. Genuinely a giant pain in the dick. Like, if people Never want to play it on a harder difficulty, fair, but make that an option, not, not, not a requirement. the only. Yeah. I mean, I wholeheartedly agree. I severely agree. Uh, and we're going to move on. Clan meeting atop a skyscraper. Commission piece for safety team clan. And that's super dope. It's all of their guardians hanging out uh, in the last city, hanging out on a steel beam, having lunch. I love that homage to the that classic painting of the steel workers in New York. Yeah, I think it's super dope. Um, and I love that the Guardians just genuinely don't care. Like, you can see them, like, just fucking around because they know, ah, if I die on the floor, my ghost, will, my ghost got me. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. I like the next one, too. And then RK Guardians, the Thrilladrome. Oh, oh, my bad. I meant to go back. Uh, Olak 3D did the, the safety team clan. Um, I need to shout out the person on Twitter. I forgot about that. Yeah. Olak 3D did the Skyscraper uh, Iron Beam Workers. Uh, and Stacy Blep did the Thrilladrome. And it's all three classes hanging out uh, at the arcade. Which is lit as hell. That arcade is cool. Uh, and that is it for this. So, yeah, mostly raid stuff. Uh, you know, I'm going to be honest. I really wish that they had released the raid stuff last week. <laughs> so Would have been nice instead of, like... The day of? <laughs> like, right before. Like, literally, the they released before. it less than, like, 12 hours. Yeah. Basically. Really, really annoyed by that. But not that we can really do about it. So, yeah. Um, but with that being said, honestly, not too bad of a twab, just kind of a, a information kind of drop, just kind of giving us some stuff to look forward to. Nothing actually for this season other than the raid. It's literally just all, hey, by the way, uh, FYI, this shit's coming up in the next season. Have fun for the next two to three months. <laughs> Yeah. It's pretty much what this lob said. It said, fuck any information coming up for this season. Fuck off. We'll give I, you the next season. I will shit say, now. after doing a little bit of uh, exploring around and a little bit of grinding, them dropping literally like three exotic quests right away. Not bad, honestly. And they gave us a wide variety of those, too. Like, they gave us. I mean, they gave us they gave us a machine gun, they gave us a glaive, and they gave us uh, it's a pistol, right? Uh, sidearm. Sidearm. Yeah. It's basically the smart pistol from Titanfall Two. Yeah. So, uh, so. However. However. There is already a secret exotic quest. Oh, uh, all right. You're helping me with that on Sunday. <laughs> You're helping with me with that on Sunday, and we're going to blast through every single one because I need to get strange shit done. So. Okay, I, I can tell you right now, the exotic glaive one that's part of the expansion, that's not going to be done in a day. We'll skip that's that one, then. That's a super grindy one. We'll skip that, then. Yeah, win Winter Bite is a pretty intense grind. We'll do that later on another day. We'll do the machine gun and the sidearm. Uh, Sunday, yeah. and then we'll do the new exotic one. The machine gun is easy to do. The sidearm, you're gonna need all the strand fragments. Oh! Yeah. All right, yeah. Fuck. Yeah. So the machine gun, easy. The secret one also doesn't require a whole lot to. Uh, all right, so we'll do the machine start. gun. All right, so we're gonna do the machine gun, and then we'll do the secret one, and then we'll start on the sidearm and go from there. That's how we'll do it. And then yeah, you can, you can get the can, meditations the, while doing everything. Yeah, the glaive can come later. Um, but yeah, I mean overall, eh, it's a simple twab. Nothing crazy, nothing special. Um, Danny, yeah. do you have anything else that you want to talk about uh, about the twab itself? I am hoping that a lot of this stuff gets fixed relatively soon. But overall, considering that this is still like the early stages of this expansion not terrible yeah i mean it is uh, i think we can all be honest this is nowhere like this, it's not bad because let's be honest it's definitely above uh curse of osiris 
that is still trash tier. That is still. Curse of Osiris is such a low bar. <laughs> it's such a low bar. Yeah, that is like that's not even on the tier list. You can't put it on there. It's how that's how that, trash it is. That expansion almost killed Destiny. That that is how bad Curse of Osiris was. Yeah. Yeah. The next one brought people back enough to keep it alive. What was the expansion but, after? Uh, Warmind. Warmind, and then after that was Forsaken, right? Yeah, because like. Yeah, Escalation did a Protocol. pretty good job of that. <laughs> Escalation Protocol, when they introduced that, I was like, oh, this is an, a relatively easy event in a public space that you can just farm indefinitely for gear. Oh. Yeah. This is kind of nice. Yeah. So, uh, with that being said, Danny... Where can they find you? You can find me on YouTube and Twitch under the same name. You can also find me uh, at Domini Fox on Twitch or YouTube. You can also find me on Twitter at Domini Fox One. Uh, I am. I keep saying that I'm going to keep talking about shit, posting about anime, and I'm going to do it. I'm actually going to post some tonight because uh, this season for romance anime fucking sucks. Oh my fucking god, I hate it. Um, so catch my shit posting on Twitter uh, at Domini Fox One. Um, with that being said, uh, thank you guys so much for stopping by for the video. We really appreciate it. Uh, we both hope that you all have a wonderful rest of your day. Uh, and as always, don't be a sweat lord. We'll see you guys next time. <laughs>